Hey everybody, it's Julie from So Creative, obviously, because this is on the So Creative YouTube channel. Um, I just wanted to reach out to all my Solaris and Destiny Club ladies um, and say hey. And I was going to do a, like a quick little tutorial on um, some heirloom stitching. Now, I'm not really perfect at this video thing, so bear with me. If you have the Solaris Inspiration Guide, um, there is an entire section on heirloom stitching in there with detailed instructions on how to do what I'm going to show you today and uh, many other um, heirloom stitching. Um, so, and, uh, so that's uh, on page 144, I believe it starts. So if you have that, you can follow along. If not, you know, it might be an option that you want to get it. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys how to do is called uh, bridging or faggoting. Um, you want to have your either your J foot or your N foot, your monogramming foot on. Um, your the stitches that we're going to choose are um, I'm going to do four different ones. Two fourteen. So if you go up into your um, stitch selection in your utilities, number two, and then choose number fourteen. You'll want to have your um, fabric. On wash away stabilizer about an eighth of an inch apart and I'm going to try and stay out of the camera range so you can actually see how this is done so you put your end foot on you you thread your your needle um, it's nice if you turn your beam on and it may be too bright in here for you to see I am NOT sure but uh, if you turn the beam on you can follow along you have your beam going down the front of your or right in the in the channel I'm gonna adjust my stitch width to I believe I'll probably go to six and I think I'm just going to leave my stitch length alone so I've got my beam going down the middle and I'm just going to push my foot control and I don't know if I was in your way or not Like, why don't I turn my speed control up a tick? And I'm going to be needle up, foot up, and take this out of here. Now, I could have used my scissors. I'm going to show you a technique that I cannot use the scissors with, so I'm, so lest I get confused, I'm going to try not to use the scissors at all so I don't make a mistake. But isn't that, isn't that neat? Can you see? How cool is that? And then you would just rinse away the uh, stabilizer. This this is more um, something you would use in you know decorative work. You could use it in garments, um, decorative garments. Next stitch I'm going to pick is 320. I hope all of you are staying healthy. I know you can't talk back to me, but know that we're thinking about you guys. All right, here we go. I'm leaving the stitch with it. Oh, I said. I said six and I left it at five. That's all right. The next one I'll take up to six. I hope everybody's making something other than masks lately. And again, oops, how neat is that? I'll do two more. So I'm going to go to um, my character and decorative stitches. And of course, it's prompting me. Am I sure I want to do this? Yes, I am. I'm going to go to number nine. And I want stitch uh, 981. Uh, I'll leave this at seven and I'll leave the I'll leave the length at four. We'll see how this comes out. This one is a really cool one, I think. And I apologize if I, my arm is getting in the way because I cannot see the screen while I'm doing the stitching so. My apologies. 
And again, you want to use your wash away stabilizer. I just can't not use the scissors. If you guys can see that, pretty cool. Last one, and then we'll move on to another technique. I'm going to do uh, select stitch 982, and I think this one is my favorite. in the middle. I think this one is very pretty. There's a couple other stitches you could use for this, but how fun is that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, possibly. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to do a ribbon couching. And for this one, I am going to choose stitch number, I think, I think stitch 320 for this one. So I'm going to cancel out of this, go to my utility stitches. I'm going to go to section 3, section 20. Uh, let's see, I think I will put the width. Just, I'll just leave the width alone. And I am going to put my fabric. I should have had stabilizer on this, so I'm going to do two pieces of fabric. And I'm going to thread my ribbon down the middle of my um, foot. I'm going to put my foot down. And I am going to hit my foot, foot control. Now you'll want to guide your fabric. The ribbon that I had on hand is a little bit wider than I would say to use. I would use probably eighth inch ribbon, but in these days of quarantine, you take what you can get. This is a fun little thing to do to embellish a, you know, we could embellish a pillow, a dress, um, a quilt even if you wanted. Gonna go all the way with it, no reason to. And I just pull that out, and there it is. Very pretty. And again, you can try different stitches with this. The, the inspiration guide suggests certain stitches, but you can try different stitches with, with that. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is called hem stitching. And I'm going to do a couple different examples. This is where, when we're going to be using a wing needle, and I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll try to hold it up as best I can. This is a wing needle. When you're using a wing needle, under no circumstances do you use your um, automatic threader or your cutter. This was the, the technique I told you I was going to be showing that I wanted to make sure I did not use the cutter for. Um, I again have, I'm going to put my foot down just to get it out of the way. You want to make sure that you get this needle all the way up in too. Make sure it's all the way up, as high as it'll go. Give her a nice tighten. I again, am, I'm going to leave the end foot on. Um, I'm going to put my foot back up. I am not going to use the, the threader. And when you're not using the threader, you could use you could use the threader that uh, came with the, the ovation if you wanted to, the manual threader. 
the eye on this is looks a little tinier and what it does is it pierces um, it pierces the fabric and makes the hole much bigger so on here I'm going to select stitch let's see I'll do a couple different examples I'm going to do stitch as long as we're still in three I'll do stitch uh, let's do stitch three 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 Here we go. Now, in my sample, or, or my when I was trying this out, I didn't actually use fabric. I used faux leather because I was just interested and I am not going to use the scissors. That's more for my benefit to remember than yours, ladies. See what it does? Now, if I used a finer thread, you could probably see it better, but I didn't have a finer thread. So isn't that cool? It's a really, just a, like an heirloom look. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose uh, three, six maybe. No, I don't like three, six. I didn't like the way that came out at all. Uh, let's see, I'll try three, eight. And again, not using my thread cutter. This needle puts a, a, a rather large hole in your fabric, which gives you a very unique look. And if you use something, you know, a fabric that was um, thinner, I'm just using a regular cotton and I'm using black with white thread just so you guys can see. And again, no thread cutter. Can you see that? Oops, sorry guys. Isn't that pretty? Next one I'm gonna do is 310. That looks like a fun one. And again with this, not using the thread cutter, I probably would have used, should have used a piece of stabilizer. I wasn't even thinking, to be honest with you. Very pretty. The last one I'm going to do is, let's see, I think I'm going to do 314. I might do two more. I might do 314 and 315. All right, so I'm going to double it over. Just a fun little look. You don't always think about using the your uh, decorative stitches to embellish because we have these beautiful embroidery machines. But you know, sometimes a quick little embellishment on a collar or pillow. Oh yeah, that one I really like. Isn't that pretty? Very, very pretty. Last one for this. I'm going to do 315. And then, of course, you'll have to bear with me while I change my needle out again. Oh, this one's really pretty, too. Really, really pretty. And I just give it a press, see the holes? Oops, sorry. See the holes, isn't that cool? And if you had if you had a different fabric behind it, all I have is black at the moment. Oh, this is this was my sample. I thought it came out really kind of cool on the um, faux leather. But if you had, you know, you could almost see behind it if you had a fabric behind it. All right, now you're gonna have to bear with me again because now I am gonna change my wing needle out. 
And we're gonna, the next one, we're gonna be using the R foot. So I'm gonna change the needle in the foot. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, I am not a videographer. And I always take my thread out um, from behind that hook before I change the needle. And I either get it right in or it'll take me five minutes. All right, got the needle in. I can go back to using my needle threader. Yay! Love my needle threader. And get my foot on. This you can use either the edge joining foot, which unfortunately I do not have here with me, or you can use your R foot. The R foot has a blade down the middle of it, and the edge joining foot also has, um, has a uh, guide. So what we're gonna be doing right now is joining lace to fabric. And I just wanted to show you how I have this clipped. And I'm using the Magic Clips which I absolutely love. They come in several different sizes. I believe I have all the sizes, but I could only find the small ones and the, the large ones. You probably can't see this, but it, it does have um, markings on it. It has a quarter, in, or I'm sorry, an eighth inch mark and a quarter inch mark. And these are great for quilters because if you clip it at the eighth inch mark, your needle is a quarter in, or is an eighth inch away from your um, the side of your foot and you can just sew right down the edge you don't sew over these don't ever do that and then this is this one is the half inch has a half inch mark on it and they come in um, blue I think blue and green uh, they have several sizes so I'm just I've just have my fabric um, about an eighth of an inch um, excuse me I'm saying um a lot about an eighth of an inch beyond my lace I have my lace right side together with my fabric I want my needle to and the bar of and the blade to re be resting on the fabric, and I want my lace right up against right up against that. I hit the wrong button. So the stitch that I'm going to be using is um, what stitches? What stitch am I going to use? It is stitch number. I'm going to go back to one. I'm going to use stitch 110. And so here we go. Again, the blade is on the fabric. The lace is butted up against the, the blade. And I'm just going, to, just going to start stitching along. And I'm going to take my clips out. Oh, let me see. Did I need to? Let me see if I'm going to change my... No, I'm leaving my left, my stitch width and stitch length right where they are, I think. No, I'll, I'm going to take the width down, down to three, and my length down to one. Oops, I almost took the wrong clip out. And I got, I have my guide beam on. I probably cannot see it very well. I'll try making. Well, I had a little bit of an audio glitch on the last part of this. Um, video. So I'm having to do a voiceover. So I'm going to do my best on this. So I'm making sure I'm sewing down um, the lace. I'm making sure the lace is butted straight up against the blade of my blind hem foot and the blade is skimming over the top of my fabric. So I'm removing my clips as I go along. Definitely do not want to sew over those clips. Just scooting right along. My, I'm using the same setting that I used the last time. Um, the stitch number 110 and the same width and length down to the end of it I'm using my scissors and if you can see what I would do now is I would take it to the iron and I would give it a nice little press and there you go you've attached your lace to your project now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach two pieces of lace together. I have these held together with magic pins. These pins have a silicone head on them that can be ironed. So you don't have to take, take them out of your project if you want to iron it. You do not want to sew over them. They come in many different sizes. The ones I'm using in the video are the quilting pins, but they have silk pins, fine pins, extra sharp pins. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slip the 
each piece of lace right sides up, one piece on one side of the blade, one piece on the other, making sure they're both butted right up close to that blade. Again, leaving my settings the same, same stitch, same set settings that I had before. And I'm going to just quickly stitch down the middle. I do have my um, beam on, which unfortunately you can't see because of the angle of the camera. But I do have that on going straight down the middle of where I'm sewing. I'm removing the pins as I go along because you can iron over them, but you can't sew over them. Um, Never want to sew over a pin, whether it's with your serger or with your sewing machine. Definitely do not want to sew over pins. That is not good for machines. So I'm almost done here. Use my scissors. And there we have it. Two pieces of uh, lace joined together, and this can be sewn on something to add embellishment to what whatever you want. Um, a pillow, a dress, a sleeve. Now, and the next thing I'm going to show you is attaching, attaching it to a piece of fabric. That's one I had done earlier. I had it attached with my sew tight clips. They are phenomenal. They're magnetic, and they're very good for hard to, hoop, hard to hoop things. You can use them on your embroidery, also. Um, hard to hoop things and hard to pin or clip something that you would have trouble pinning or clipping. They're magnetic. This package is the um, mixer package. You get five of the round uh, orange ones, five of the purple ones, and five of the green ones. Um, they're perfectly safe to use on your embroidery machines and your sewing machines. I'm just going to remove the first one, slide the fabric and the lace underneath my presser foot, and I'm just going to sew along. I probably would use a different um, a different stitch on this, but I didn't want to prolong this any longer with just showing you how to attach something to attach the fabric to uh, or attach the lace to the fabric. Sorry, um, so I'm just going to stitch it, leaving the the blind hem foot on, and unfortunately I didn't hold it up high enough for you guys to see it. I apologize about that, but it's just a fun little way to add embellishments to projects. So that is my video. I hope it was informative and enjoyable, and I really, really hope to be able to see you guys pretty soon. I miss everybody, and again, I hope you're all healthy and staying safe. Bye!